Today we're going to be talking about Mormonism and the apostasy. Welcome, this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in our identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future content related to cults and how to share the gospel of God's grace with them. And so let's go ahead and dive into today. My most popular video on YouTube to this day is the LDS Plan of Salvation video. It happens to be the first one that I ever uploaded as well. And so because of that, and I have several other videos dealing with that, I thought I would take that video as well as my other videos on Mormonism and dive into the more specific topics and beliefs. And so that's what the videos this week are going to focus on. And the first of those is going to be on the apostasy. What exactly Exactly, do Mormons believe when they talk about the great apostasy of the church? And so, in doing so, I'm going to be talking about content that you can find in my book, Sharing Jesus with the Cults, available on Amazon as paperback or Kindle. And I'm also going to be getting into a material that's from the LDS website and articles that I found there, as well as a book called Mormon Doctrine by Bruce R. McConkie. And I'm using this because this is uh, what I kind of cut my teeth on when I got into Mormonism. Uh, Bruce McConkie was a former apostle uh, who has since passed away of the LDS Church, and he represents a day in which he was heavy on theology and he did not pull any punches. And so that's why I love getting into him. And he'll point you to all of the scriptures and the Bible, uh, in their Doctrine and Covenants, or even uh, Revelations or books, Mormon books, that talk about these different topics. And so uh, we're going to be diving into both, because I think the LDS.org represents accurately, um, to a certain extent, Mormonism of today, but then Mormon doctrine really gives you the unblemished truth in what they believe about these topics. So uh, let's jump in. Uh, the article was on the apostasy. And when individuals or groups of people turn away from the principles of the gospel, they are in a state of apostasy. One example is the great apostasy which occurred after the Savior established his church. So, uh, after the death of the Savior and his apostles, men corrupted the principles of the gospel and made unauthorized changes in church organization and priesthood ordinances. Because of this widespread apostasy, the Lord withdrew the authority of the priesthood from the earth. This apostasy lasted until Heavenly Father and His Beloved Son appeared to Joseph Smith in 1820 and initiated the restoration of the fullness of, a, of the gospel. So that says it pretty much in a nutshell. When they refer to the great apostasy, they believe that Jesus established his church, which they believe agrees with everything pertaining to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, in going from temple ordinances... Uh, to covenant keeping, to doctrine, that all of that was around when Jesus was uh, on the earth and that he passed on this priesthood, which they believe are the Aaronic and Melchizedek priesthoods, to his apostles, to the twelve. and But then they got persecuted and they started being killed before they passed on their priesthood authority to future generations. Then they believe following that, that malicious scribes came in and tampered with the manuscripts. And so they took out these plain and precious truths, as the Book of Mormon put it, and they uh, changed the organization, as it says. They changed the ordinances. They changed the doctrines of, of the church. And so the church went into a state of complete apostasy, the priesthood authority to baptize and to uh, do ordinances was taken away from the face of the earth. And that was the state all the way up until 1820, they believe. And that is the timing of the claimed first vision of Joseph Smith by God the Father and Jesus Christ, both in bodies of flesh and bone, as he claimed. And um, they 
restored that priesthood. They gave that priesthood authority to Joseph, and then he passed it on. And then it still has been shared and passed on to future generations as time has gone on in the true uh, Salt Lake City branch of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So moving on, it says, Latter-day Saints believe that through the priesthood conferred to Joseph Smith by the ministering of angels, the authority to act in God's name was brought back to the earth. This is restored, not reformed Christianity. Their belief is a restored their belief in a restored Christianity helps explain why most Latter-day Saint converts from the 1830s to the present converted from other Christian denominations. None of these converts thought they were leaving Christianity. They are simply grateful to learn about and become part of the restored Church of Jesus Christ, which they believe offers a more complete and rich Christian church spiritually, organizationally, and doctrinally. During the Great Apostasy, people were without divine direction from living prophets. Many churches were established, but they did not have priesthood power to lead people to the true knowledge of God the Father and Jesus Christ. Parts of the Holy Scriptures were corrupted or lost, and no one had the authority to confer the gift of the Holy Ghost or perform other priesthood ordinances. We now live in a time when the gospel of Jesus Christ has been restored. But unlike the churches, church in times past, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will not be overcome by general apostasy. The Scriptures teach that the church will never again be destroyed. The interesting thing about that is that Jesus during his lifetime said that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church which he is building. And uh, Jude referred to the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. And so um, I believe, biblically speaking, that Jesus said, uh, and the New Testament agrees with, and he also said that my words Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Okay, so I believe that Jesus and the Bible both confirm that the idea of the great apostasy was promised to never happen the first time. So if that is the case, then why do they believe that it will never happen again, even though their scriptures promise the same thing? Although there will not, and they cite Doctrine and Covenants 138.44 and Daniel 2.44 under that heading. Although there will not be another general apostasy from the truth, we must each guard against personal apostasy by keeping covenants, obeying the commandments, following church leaders, partaking of the sacrament, and constantly strengthening our testimonies through daily scripture study, prayer, and service. And uh, so it goes on. Uh, oh, okay, so that's for tomorrow's video on Joseph Smith. Anyway, uh, from Mormon Doctrine, let's see what he had to say. Uh, he, by the way, he links this uh, article to abominations, agnosticism, anathema, antichrist, atheism, blasphemy, broad-mindedness, card-playing, celibacy, Christendom, Christianine, Christianity, Christmas, Church of the Devil, Clinic Baptisms, Creeds, Damnation, Dark Ages, Darkness, Devil, Doctrine, Easter, Eucharist, Evolution, Excommunication, Extreme Unction, Fallen Man, False Christ, False Gods, Gambling, Gnosticism, God as a Spirit, Gospel, Gospel Hobbies, Government of God, Hell, Heresy, Idolatry, Ignorance, Infant Baptism, Inquisitions, Kingcraft, Man of Sin, Ministerial Titles, Murderers, Mythology, Obedience, Persecution, Philosophy, Polytheism, Priestcraft, Profanity, Rebellion, Religious Syncretism, Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Restoration of the Gospel, Righteousness, Scattering of Israel, Second Coming of Christ, Secret Combinations, Sex, Immorality, Shrines, Signs of the Cross, Signs of the Times, Sin, Sons of perdition, sorcery, spiritualism, celestial law, temptation, unknown God, war, wickedness, witchcraft, worship of images. So there you go. There's some of the things that are connected to this idea of apostasy. So he says, from Adam to the present, the whole history of the world has been one recurring instance of personal and group apostasy after another. To Adam, the Lord gave the true gospel and the true government so that all matters pertaining to this mortal sphere could be governed and arranged in harmony with the order of heaven. Apostasy consists in the abandonment and forsaking of these true principles, and all those who do not believe and conform to them are in an apostate condition, whether they are the ones who departed from the truth or whether they inherited their false concepts from their apostate fathers. 
apostate peoples were swept off the earth by the universal flood in Noah's day, but immediately the process of apostatizing began again, and soon there were apostate individuals, groups, peoples, nations, and religions. The Lord's hand dealings with them, with men, have always been designed to keep the faithful from the treason of apostasy and to encourage those who do not have the fullness of truth to come to the light and reap the blessings of obedience. Blessings have always attended conformity to true principles, while cursings have been the fruit of apostasy. The scattering of Israel, for example, took place because that people forsake their God and the true principles he had revealed to them. Their gathering takes place as they return to him and begin to live his laws. Jeremiah 16, 10-21 cited. In the meridian of time, our Lord personally restored his gospel and through the ministry of his apostolic witnesses offered its saving truths to all men. Mark 1, 14, 15, 16, 14 through 18 cited. He did not, however, restore the true order of political government that was reserved for a future millennial era, Acts 1, 6 through 8. Consequently, men remained in subjection to man-made governments, but had the opportunity to accept the saving truths of pure religion. The great apostasy, which is of importance and concern to men in this day, is the one which took place which men, when men departed from the pure Christianity, which was restored in the meridian of time. This universal apostasy began in the days of the ancient apostles themselves, 2 Peter 2, 1 and 2, and it was known to and foretold by them. Paul recorded specifically that the second coming would not be until this great falling away day took place, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. He warned of the perilous times that should come in the last days, times when men would have a form of godliness but would deny the power thereof, times when they would be ever learning and never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Times in which they would be turned from the truth into fables, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. Our Lord foretold the perplexities, calamities, and apostate wickedness of these same days, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. With the loss of the gospel, the nations of the earth went into a moral eclipse called the Dark Ages. Apostasy was universal. Darkness covered the earth and gross darkness the minds of the people, and all flesh became corrupt before my face, Doctrine and Covenants 1, 12, 23. And this darkness still prevails except amongst those who have come to a knowledge of the restored gospel from Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 3, pages 263 through 326. No better descriptions are to be found of the conditions of false Latter-day churches than those recorded prophetically by Nephite prophets. Nephi said, In the last days, or in the days of the Gentiles, yea, behold, all the nations of the Gentiles, and also the Jews, both those who shall come upon this land, and those who shall be upon other lands, yea, even upon the lands of both earth, behold, they will be drunken with iniquity and all manner of abominations. 2 Nephi 27 verse 1. He spoke in detail of the many churches, of their pride, worldly learning, and denial of miracles, their envies and strifes and malice of the secret combinations of the devil, which commit murders and iniquities of the priestcrafts and iniquities, Second Nephi 26, 20 through 29, of the ministers who shall teach with their learning and deny the Holy Ghost, which gives utterance, and of their false and vain and foolish doctrine, Second Nephi 28, Moroni described the direful apostasy that would prevail in the day of the coming forth of the Book of Mormon. That volume shall come in a day, he said, when the power of God shall be denied and churches become defiled and be lifted up in the pride of their hearts. Yea, even in a day when leaders of the churches and teachers shall rise in the pride of their hearts, even to the envy of them who belong to their churches. Yea, it shall come in a day when there shall be great pollutions upon the face of the earth. There shall be murders, and robbing, and lying, and deceivings, and whoredoms, and all manner of abominations, when there shall be many who will say, Do this or do that, and it mattereth not, for the Lord will uphold such at the last day. But woe unto such, for they are in the gall of bitterness, and in the bonds of iniquity. Yea, it shall come in a day, when there shall be churches built up, and they shall say, Come unto me, and for your money you shall be forgiven of your sins. O oh, you wicked and perverse and stiff-necked people, why have you built up churches unto yourselves to get gain? Why have you transfigured the holy word of God, that you might be in damnation upon your souls? Your churches, yea, when even every one have become polluted because of your pride of your hearts. For behold, you love the money and your substance, and your fine apparel and the adorning of your churches, more than you love the poor and the needy, the sick and the afflicted. O oh, you pollutions, you hypocrites, you teachers, who sell yourselves for that which will tinker.
Why have you polluted the holy church of God? Why are you ashamed to take upon you the name of Christ? Why do you not think that greater is the value of an endless happiness than that misery which never dies because of the praise of the world? Why do you adorn yourselves with that which has no life, yet suffers the hungry and the needy and the naked and the sick and the afflicted to pass by you and notice them not? Yea, why do you build up your secret abominations to get gain and cause that widows should mourn? before the Lord, and also orphans to mourn before the Lord, and also the blood of their fathers and their husbands to cry unto the Lord from the ground for vengeance upon your heads. Mormon 8.28-41 To the extent that worldliness, false doctrine, and iniquity are found among the saints, they too partake of the spirit of the great apostasy. Speaking of the men in the last days, Nephi said, They have all gone astray, save it be a few who are the humble followers of Christ. Nevertheless, they are led that in many instances they do err because they are taught by the precepts of men. 2 Nephi 28.14 It follows that if members of the church believe false doctrines, if they accept false educational theories, if they fall into the practices and abominations of the sectarians, they use tea, coffee, tobacco, or liquor, if they fail to pay an honest tithing, if they find fault with the Lord's anointed, if they play cards, if they do anything contrary to the standards of personal righteousness required by the gospel, then to that extent they are in personal apostasy and need to repent. Since truth is always in harmony with itself, and since all true saints speak the same thing, have no divisions among them, and are perfectly joined together in the same mind, and in the same judgment, 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13 Sounds like mind control, honestly. It follows that there, there are, when there are divisions and contention, their apostasy is present. If modern churches do not conform to the New Testament pattern of the true church, then the non-conforming organizations are apostate. The simple test of the authenticity of any church claiming to be of the Lord's may be made by finding answer to such questions as, where is there a church that has, according to the New Testament pattern, some combination of the names of Christ as its name? And so I, I've talked about that, the idea of the restoration movement, not original with Joseph Smith, in which they believe that Church of Christ, or Christian Church, or Jesus Christ needed to be in the name of the church. And yet it wasn't in the original name of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Why is that? Anyway, where, where there is a church claiming to have priesthood of both the Aaronic and Melchizedek orders as set forth in the New Testament, the New Testament that I'm reading, Jesus has the untransferable soul ownership and holder of the Melchizedek priesthood. Read Hebrews 5 through 7, and especially, I believe, at 624, um, where it talks about that. Where are there apostles, prophets, seventies, and all the officers put in the church by our Lord? Where do we find all the gospel ordinances, among others, baptism for the dead, the laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the ministering to the sick? Where are the true New Testament doctrines taught that the plan of salvation consists in faith, repentance, baptism, gaining the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring in good works to the end? By the way, that's also Church of Christ, uh, that, that they believe in all of those things. That there are degrees of glory in the eternal world, that the gospel is preached in the spirit world. Um, is there a reason why the word terrestrial um, or I saw, telestial or terrestrial, one of those two, uh, is never in the passages in the Bible where they claim that they got these revelations from. That there are degrees of glory in the eternal world, that the gospel is preached in the spirit world. Two fallen angels, not to anybody else. Uh, two fallen angels, and it was proclaiming a victory, 1 Peter 3, 18 and 19. That's exactly what it says that there was to be a universal apostasy followed by an era of restoration, uh, not a complete apostasy, that there is a tendency of, you know, a falling away from the faith, personal as well as corporate, but not complete. There has always been a faithful remnant that has been promised to be present in the earth and that God has always worked through. God has never abandon his people. And Jesus even said, Lo, I will be with you even until the end of the age. And so, no, there is no complete apostasy and there is therefore no need for restoration of this one true church. That the gospel was to be returned to earth by angelic ministration never says that. Never says that. Uh, what they're, they refer to a lot of times is in Revelation where you have the angels proclaiming trumpet judgments and woe upon the earth. That Israel was to be gathered in a day subsequent to the New Testament times and so forth. 
There's a lot of churches who believe that and teach that, but you believe something different about Israel. You believe that the church has replaced Israel and that this was not national Israel, and I believe that you are wrong. Where are all these New Testament doctrines taught? And above all, where are the gifts of the Spirit, the signs, visions, miracles, and marvelous works that without respect to persons shall follow them that believe? Mark 16, 17. For those who are honest and sincere in their search, it is not difficult to find out whether there has been a universal apostasy, and if so, where the truth is today. So, thank you, First Star McConkie, for telling the truth. And uh, he made it very clear. Um, so, here's the ramifications for this. I, I get this criticism a lot, and it's very common amongst Mormons. Uh, when you talk something, uh, when you disagree with their church, or you, when you go on a forum like YouTube, and you tell, tell others and warn others about the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and some of the doctrines that they teach, and some of the practices that they do, that they will attack you and say, you know, I don't know why you would attack us, or what you get out of attacking us, or what you think you're going to accomplish by attacking us. And uh, what they're failing to realize is that the entirety of Mormonism is based upon Joseph Smith claiming that every single solitary church uh, on the face of the earth was apostate. That we are all a church of the devil, that we are all the whore of Babylon. You know, that we were all an abomination, that our creeds are an abomination that we had no priesthood authority, that we were leading people astray. It's all based off upon that. And uh, so for them to look at us now and say, how could you speak evil about us or what do you think you're accomplishing by that? Just ask them, what is the belief about the great apostasy? And let the conversation flow from there. And let him know, I'm just doing exactly what Joseph Smith believed that he was doing. I am trying to teach people about the truth about Jesus Christ and the gospel that he preached. And I don't believe that your church teaches that. And so, therefore, you're on my list of people that I need to proclaim this gospel to. So, if you have an insight or a question that I did not discuss today, feel free to put that in the comments down below. I'll be taking some of those for the weekly Q&A at the end of the week. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on the content if you enjoy the content for today. And share this video with others who are interested in material in relation to cults and how to share the true gospel with them. And so now to the announcement that I promised at the end, and there's one major announcement that I need to let you guys know of. It has mainly to do with the study through the Bible material, so our content related to the Bible. And some of you who watch these cults videos might not enjoy or might not like that there's so much other content in relation to the Bible and walking through the Bible. It's just not what you're looking for out of this YouTube channel. And so we're going to make this channel more niche specific and give you guys exactly what you want. And what and so we're asking for your partnership. We are moving all of that. We're not taking it off of this channel, but we are all future Bible content is going on a separate channel called Study Through the Bible. And it's already up and active. I'm going to put links in the end screen, the cards, and the descriptions down below so that you can... Um, Hop over there if you enjoy that content and subscribe separately on that channel and keep up with that. And that if you like the cult content, you can have that and stay right here on this channel. And that's the exclusively what we're going to be doing. The multiple videos throughout the week dealing with our most popular content and then uh, the weekly Q&A each week. And uh, then we also have all of our archive material that you, I encourage you to go through. And um, so if there's any ideas that you have for future improvement of this channel, uh, please get, shout those out. And I will take a look at that and uh, see um, what, what we decide to do. And um, I would just ask you to partner with us, encourage us by 
subscribing by liking the, the videos when you watch them. Watch them in the entirety, and then if you have time and, and you know it links to another video, click on those videos because the more watch time you give this channel, the more it helps out. The more comments you put, the more it helps out. The more likes that you give, the more it helps out. The more subscriptions and the more shares that you put it out there, it communicates to YouTube. People like this content, they like this channel, People who are into apologetics and, and specifically related to cults, they love this channel and it'll get them promoting it out there and it will help the channel grow. So um, that's what I ask of you and please uh, share this video with others. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.